A lot of videos on the internet are going viral about the predictions made by a woman named Baba Winga, especially about Donald Trump and the impact that will come upon the world during his second term presidency. Folks, some of the predictions made by her are literally very scary. But what is the truth? Are those predictions that you might have heard about made by Beba Wenga are really true? What the Bible says about her predictions and why it is so important for all of us who are faithful people of God to know the reality, you will get to know in this video ahead. So I request you to please stay until the very end of this video. Also, we will discuss the possible prophecies that are coming true by 2025 in this video ahead. Folks, by the 1980s, Baba Venga, who adopted that name, had already made thousands of predictions. Some people even started calling her the Nostradamus of the Balkans. Think about that for a second. Nostradamus himself was a controversial figure and now this woman was being placed in the same category. But here's the thing. Despite her passing in 1996, people still cling to her words, saying her prophecies are coming true even now. And now with all these claims about Donald Trump and his presidency, it has got people stirred up all over again. So let's address it directly. Are these predictions true? And what does the word of God actually say about all of this? Because listen, as believers, we cannot afford to just swallow everything that is put in front of us. No matter how sensational it sounds, we have got to test the spirit behind it. Now, there's a lot of buzz about what Baba Wenga supposedly predicted regarding Trump. It claims about his health, claims about major world shifts during his second term. People are saying it is going to lead to chaos, even a potential downfall. But we should stop there. Folks, I want to ask one question. Do you realize what this God, do you realize what this does to people's minds? It stirs up fear, panic and uncertainty. And fear, let me remind you, is not of God. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and a sound mind. Let me tell you this. Fear is a tactic the enemy loves to use. Why? Because when you are afraid, you are distracted. You stop trusting God. You start relying on human understanding. And that is exactly how the devil sneaks in. To sow confusion and chaos. But remember the Bible says in John 14 verse 1, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. Now let us talk about Baba Wenga's predictions from a biblical perspective. The Bible warns us repeatedly about false prophets. Matthew 24 verse 24 says, For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Did you hear that? Even the elect. That means you, me, and every faithful believer are the potential targets. Folks, 
Baba Wenger's predictions may have some level of accuracy, but that doesn't mean they are from God. The devil can mimic knowledge. He can twist truth to make it look like a prophecy, but his ultimate goal is always to lead people away from the truth of God's word. And let us not forget Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12, which warns against turning to divination, sorcery, or any practices that seek guidance outside of God. It says, these things are detestable to the Lord. So ask yourself, why would we give weight to someone whose words do not align with the word of God? Now, if we come back to Donald Trump and the impact he may have on the world during his second term, let us be clear now. Leaders rise and fall according to God's plan. The Bible says in Daniel 2 verse 21, He changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. So whether Trump is re-elected or not, whether his presidency leads to global shifts or not, God's hand is over everything. He's not surprised by any of this. And as for the predictions about global upheaval, listen, we don't need Baba Wenga or anyone else to tell us that Troubling times are ahead. Jesus himself warned us in Matthew 24, verse 6 to 8. You will hear wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the birth pains. So yes, the world may face challenges. Yes, there may be turmoil. But let's not forget that God is in control. Let us not forget that he has already written the end of the story. And for those of us, who are faithful for those of us who trust in Him. There is nothing to fear. Now I know some of you are curious about the possible prophecies coming true by 2025. You have seen the signs, earthquakes, wars, economic instability, moral decay, and yes, the Bible speaks about these things. These are not just random events. These are signs of the times. But let me tell you this. Our focus should not be on dates or predictions. Our only focus should be on Jesus Christ. The enemy desperately wants us to get distracted. He wants us to caught up in predictions and speculations that we miss what God is doing right now. Let me tell you something, people of God. God is moving. He's awakening His people. He's calling us to stand firm in our faith, to share the gospel like never before, and to be the light in a dark world. So don't let these predictions shake you. Don't let them distract you from what really matters. Instead, let them drive you closer to God. Dive into His Word. Seek His guidance. Pray like never before because, folks, the time is short. And one more thing. Don't underestimate the power of prayer too. If you are worried about what is happening in the world, if you are concerned about the future, take it to God. Folks, my only purpose in making this video today 
was not to discredit Baba Wenga's predictions or to dismiss them completely. Instead, my aim is to encourage you in Christ. No matter what these predictions claim, let me remind you of this undeniable truth. God is still in control. Nothing, no prophecy, no leader, no situation can override the sovereignty of God. He reigns supreme and His plans will prevail. I am not here to tell you whether you should believe her predictions or not. That decision is entirely up to you. But don't let these predictions dictate your life, your faith or your hope. Instead, let them drive you back to the word of God. Because at the end of the day, God has the final say over everything. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. And remember, folks, God hasn't left us to navigate these uncertain times on our own. He has blessed us with His Word, His Spirit, and His prophets, and even today in this world who are working tirelessly to bring glory to His kingdom. These are men and women devoted to connecting people to God, not leading them away. They are the voices calling us to repentance, the voices reminding us of God's promises and the voices guiding us toward the narrow path that leads to eternal life. So whether you choose to pay attention to Baba Wenga's predictions or not, let this message resonate in your heart, which says, God is in control. He will take charge of anything that threatens to go against His will and no man, no prediction and no force in this world can stand against the plans of the Almighty. And as His children, we are called to trust Him, to lean on Him and to place our hope in Him alone. Let us pray now boldly and with complete faith in our hearts. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, humbled by your power and sovereignty. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who holds all things in your hands. Lord, as we navigate these times of uncertainty, where voices from every corner are speaking predictions, warnings, and claims. We ask for your wisdom and discernment. Help us, Father, to separate truth from lies and to stand firm on the foundation of your word. Lord, we acknowledge that no prediction, no prophecy, and no word from men can override your ultimate plan. You are the God who speaks, and it comes to pass. You are the God who commands, and it stands firm. Teach us, Lord, to trust in your promises and to rest in the assurance that you are in control no matter what happens around us. Father, we lift up every hurt that has been troubled by fear or confusion from these predictions. We ask that you replace that fear with faith. Remind us that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Help us to cling to your peace, which surpasses all understanding, even when the world feels chaotic. Lord, we thank you for the prophets you have sent into the world, both in the past and today. We thank you for their tireless work in pointing people back to you. We pray for their protection, their strength, and their boldness as they proclaim your truth. May their word purge the hurts of those 
who hear them and draw them closer to you. Father, for those who are feeling lost, uncertain or disconnected, we pray that you would touch their hurts right now. Let them feel your presence, Father. Let them know that you are near, that you are God who sees, who hears and who cares deeply for your children. Remind them that their future is not determined by human predictions, but only by a divine plan. Lord, we pray for the church in this hour too. Strengthen your people, Father. Equip us to be lights in the darkness, to speak truth boldly, and to live lives that reflect your glory. May we not be distracted by the noise of the world, but remain focused on the mission you have given us to spread the gospel and to make disciples of all nations. Finally, Lord, we surrender our lives, our plans and our future into your hands. We trust that you are working all things together for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. We choose faith over fear, truth over lies and hope over despair. Thank you, Father, for being our refuge, our strength, and our ever-present help in trouble. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, now and forevermore, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen.